Over the weekend, a viral video featured a group of white male students wearing Trump MAGA hats in a confrontation with a Native American elder. His name is Nathan Phillips and he's from the Omaha tribe. And the way the video was presented made it appear as though this group of students was antagonizing him, mocking him, taunting him. Now, there were certainly students in that viral video who were mocking and taunting him. However, now the fuller context has been released in the form of video, and we have a better idea of what went down. Now, the early video excerpts from the encounter obscured the larger context, inflaming outrage. There were also black men who identified themselves as Hebrew Israelites preaching their beliefs and shouting racially combative comments at the Native Americans and the students. So yeah, bad actors all around. But I'm gonna show you the CBS News report that perfectly summarizes what happened and then fill in the blanks as to who the good guys versus bad guys are. A high school junior from Covington Catholic High School in Kentucky inches away while Sandman's schoolmates chanted. It seemed Phillips was being treated disrespectfully. But within hours, more videos surfaced. What the hell is you see of crackers will make America great head on? The kids from Kentucky had been taunted by a small group of African American provocateurs known as the Black Hebrew Israelites. The Covington kids shouted over them with what they say were school cheers, dozens jumping up and down. Which is when Phillips walked toward the group of students beating his drum, he says, to calm a combustible situation. What did you do when America was tearing itself apart? Did you turn your head, did you walk away? Or did you go in there, into the midst of it? and say this is wrong. So Nathan Phillips says that he wanted to intervene to calm the tensions. But as you can see, it was a pretty chaotic scene. And there were multiple protests happening in the same area. So you have the students protesting you know, abortions. You have the Native Americans protesting DAPL, the Dakota Access Pipeline. And then the Hebrew Israelites, I don't know what they were protesting, but there was a lot of yelling going on. They are protesting life. <laughs> uh, they got so misdirected, they got lost. And they're like, I don't know, I hate both of you. Uh, yeah. They literally yelled at both the Native American guy and the, and the students. Yes. Anyway, so look, a couple of things are clear, and then, and then we'll talk about what's not clear. Um, so the, the bad guys in this case is clear, and it's the the black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, so the Native Americans were in a different part. The pro life kids are are in that part. The, the Israelites <laughs> yelling at, at both of them, yeah. but but mainly at the kids, as you see in the video, right? So then the kids respond. Nathan, now that case gets to the conclusion of the second conclusion, which is clear. Nathan Phillips is the good guy here because he comes in. Not to antagonize the kids or the Israelites, but to come in and sue things over right. with the, the drum is for peace, okay? That's a mm -hmm. peace drum. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to calm everything down. Now, the reason the first video is misleading, and we'll get to the source of that video, which is very interesting, okay, is because it makes it seem like the kids came to, if you, I don't know, at least it gave that impression to some people that the kids came to Nathan Phillips. They didn't, Nathan Phillips came to them. Yes. And so, but now a lot of the right wing is attacking Nathan Phillips. So he's a veteran and he came to help the kids in the beginning, yeah. at least until they started doing weird racial things at him. So, so well, my, how could he be the bad guy? So my understanding is the right wing is attacking him because following the initial viral video, he spoke to the press about how he felt threatened, which I think is a fair thing to say because while, you know, look, there were definitely students, you can see them in the video. They're surrounding him and then they start doing the the tomahawk chop and you know, they're mocking him and all that. So to say that they were threatening, I don't think is that crazy. And I know people, some people don't understand this, but the red MAGA hats, you gotta understand what that represents to people of color, to Native Americans, to to, to non-whites in the country. It represents a lot of 
hate, racial hate, a lot of tension. And so that in and of itself is, is, is threatening for some people. Now, putting that aside though, there's like there's this obsession with trying to make everything black and white, right? There, there's a good side and there's a bad side. So the kids are either being described as good or bad. When it's a mixed bag, right? There were some kids who were doing the tomahawk chop. There were some kids that were saying incredibly heinous things about rape. In fact, we have an example for you. Let's take a look at that. It's not rape if you enjoy it. Okay, it's not rape if you enjoy it, right? So there was obnoxious yeah. behavior happening on that side as well. And then finally, I just. I just feel like everyone needs to calm down and take a second to really consider what you're about to lose your mind over. And I'm talking about everyone's reaction to the initial video, right? I saw the video and I thought to myself, well, this is unfortunate, but I'm just gonna keep to myself until I figure out what's going on. Yeah. But no one wants to do that. I find it so funny that the same media sources that cry and whine about fake news, which I do agree is a real thing. And they blame fake news for you know, Hillary losing this past election 2016. Like there they will also be the like the first sources that will run with news that they didn't vet, right? They like what was the original source for that viral video? What's the full context? If you're a journalist, you should be asking yourself that question before running with it. So we're gonna get to the source of the video in just one second. But Look, I just want to say a couple of things. Context matters a lot. So Nathan Phillips going over to basically help the kids in the beginning, and that's his original intent, that matters a lot. And then when he felt like, wait, I came to help these guys, and now are they tomahawk chop and all this stuff, and now I don't feel so good about it, that matters. Tomahawk chop, if you're at a Braves game or you're at a Florida State game, is one thing, and that's a that's a totally different context. If there's a Native American right in front of you, someone who's is you know a senior citizen, I mean you don't know that he's a veteran. That's okay, right? Uh, but uh, and then you start doing a chop on him. No, that's not remotely cool. So then you lost the. If you had any moral high ground to begin with, you've lost that. On the on the hat, there was a guy um, sitting in front of me with a MAGA hat on a plane. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he immediately did something that was a totally jerk move. And I'm like, God damn it! If you're wearing a MAGA hat, like have enough sense to not mm -hmm. immediately antagonize everyone around you, right? Because what I'm going to do is defend the MAGA hat. By the way, I tell you that full story in the post game for the members. Okay, tyt.com/slash/join, become a member. I'll tell you the whole story what happened on the plane. Okay, I know, but the act of wearing the hat. I mean, you're making a statement when you wear the hat. It's no, not I just. It. It's not simply I support Trump, right? If you support Trump, I mean, whatever, do you? But wearing that hat. That you're you're trying to message something to people around you. You know, mm -hmm. it goes further than just showing support for Trump. No, I get that the hats are, and and the people wearing it also get that there. It's a bit of like a ha ha, yeah, I do support Trump and his wall and everything else, and that's awesome. I get that, but it's a free country. You can wear any hat yeah. you want. No, I get it. Right? I get it. I'm not saying because that some they're people banned. Are now, I know. Now some people are saying like, hey, maybe the hat should be. An automatic automatic expulsion from school or something? Oh, no, that's crazy. So what are you going to then ban Mitt Romney shirts and Kamala Harris shirts? No, yeah, no, I don't, I don't agree, with that. agree with that at all. You wear any hat you like, but then don't go around like getting like shocked that it it, it antagonized people because mm -hmm. you know that you partly wore it to antagonize them. Right. right? I'm defending your right to wear it. Just understand the context of that as well, right? Exactly. But Nathan Phillips didn't come to get triggered. He came to help those kids. And and then they were antagonistic towards him. And by the way, why were they antagonistic towards him? He didn't say anything. He was just beating the drum. So what context did, and clue did they have to go to think that he was against them and yeah. for them to turn on him? So uh, now, following the initial video going viral, uh, the students uh, reached out to some sort of PR firm to do damage control, and uh, Nick Sandman, who is the student. Pictured and in, in you know all of the images that you've seen of this, where he's kind of smirking at mm -hmm. uh, the Native American elder. He released a statement, and this is what he said: "I did smile at one point because I wanted him to know I was not going to become angry, intimidated, or be provoked into a larger confrontation. Except he came in to prevent a confrontation or prevent." Escalation between your group and the Hebrew Israelites, but anyway, moving no, on. Okay, no, no, hold on. One quick addition to that: all he did was beat the peace drum. So 
why did you interpret that as a confrontation? Just a quick, just a question. Well, like literally, why did you interpret that as if someone, if a Native American came to me and started beating the drums, I'd be like, cool, what are we doing? <laughs> right? Like, what, I'd ask, like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. Right? And like, what does it mean? Uh, wh what's your intent, etc. No, he assumed that this random guy beating the drums was against him. Why did you make that assumption? The only other factor left is race. Right? I, maybe I'm wrong though. I don't know. Look, Nick could answer himself. It was a chaotic scene and. Tensions are high, so you don't really know what to make of anything. Remember, these are high school students. He's a junior in high school. Yeah. So yeah, we're yeah. assuming that it's these a are like. By the way, I'll say that too. It's a different standard. Look, they're not quite that mature, right? So I don't want that to haunt all those kids forever. On the other hand, somebody should teach them saying that uh, you know, shouting things about rape is not cool, yeah. right? And and harassing people uh, with the tomahawk chop when they're Native Americans is not cool. And and I also put it on the adults to teach them better, and they haven't obviously. Now, if you're gonna make a claim, look, I want to make America great again. I just love these policies, but it has nothing to do with race. Then you should be really tough on your kids when they tomahawk chop Native Americans, right? So it's not thing, it's not physical, but it's obviously derisive. You know that. Mm -hmm. Were they doing it to compliment him? No. And and in in you know the rest of his statement, Nick Sandman's statement, he talks about how you know his personal space was kind of invaded mm -hmm. by um, Nathan, Nathan Phillips. Phillips. And look again, I, he probably didn't know what was going on. I, maybe I'm giving too much of a benefit of the doubt. But there were there was wrongdoing by some of those students as well. So I'm not completely putting them off the hook as if they're like these innocent like students who did nothing wrong. Some of them were mocking him, taunting him, you get the picture. Now let's get to the original tweet because I think that's the heart of the story and we keep falling victim to the same BS over and over again. It's crazy. So there was an account, 2020 Fight, that's been suspended by Twitter because there is some concern that that account was a fake account. This is the original source of the first viral video, okay? The 2020 fight account followed over 37,000 users and averaged 210 posts and likes a day, which experts say are classic signs that the account may be automated or inauthentic. Okay, but was it? Here's more. The account claimed to be a California school teacher named Talia, but the photo used matched a Brazilian blogger and model. So this is the original source. And just quick comment about the mainstream press. They come across this original source and they just assume, yeah, yeah, we're gonna run with it. This is it, this is the full story. Like you guys complain about how fake news negatively impacted the 2016 election. And then you help perpetuate fake news that leads to these racial tensions in the country. So we don't know who set up that seemingly fake account and put that video out there. We do know that historically, meaning the last couple of years, there have been outside forces that want to split us apart. And they will sometimes pose as right wingers and they will sometimes pose as left wingers. And in this case, what do they mainly want us to do? Fight. So they Mission take, accomplished. Exactly. They take a video out of context, they put it up and the left wing sees what they want to see, the right wing sees what they want to see and everybody goes to war immediately, right? And so. That's why it's important to consider the source and the context as we told, tell you over and over again. And in this case, the source, whoever they are, uh, wants to create conflict in this country. So beware of that. Like what you see, click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks.